Hi guys, it's uh, Glenn here at the Burger King on PCH in the LBC. I'm here with Alyssa Arnie and Natalie B. Um, we're here uh, to try Burger King um, Mac and Cheetos. Mac and Cheetos, partly because we're coffee. curating a new exhibition, uh, guilt wrapped in. Shame, Shame wrapped, wrapped, in wrapped in Repulsion. Repulsion. I should remember the name. Shame Wrapped in Repulsion. Uh, inspired by Burger King Mac and Cheetos. Uh, so we're really inviting people to submit work. Uh, it doesn't have to be about Mac and Cheetos or even about food, but it might be. Um, so I don't know. Wow. Yeah. So you've had them before, Alyssa. I have. Natalie, have you experienced these yet? About a week and a half ago I tried these for the first time. And have I you? No, it's my first time. Yeah, steal one to each. Yeah, yeah. there you go. If I so need here two, we go. Go for it. <laughs> well, these are fresher than the last time I had them for sure. Yeah. Mhm. Mm okay. You know, they didn't really sound that great, and then I saw a bunch of video reviews where people seemed to actually kind of like them, or. Mm -hmm. or People said not as disgusting as I expected. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm not. I don't think I'm a fan. It's just really, <laughs> really salty. And well, it's not as good as mac and cheese or Cheetos. Yeah, it doesn't taste like a Cheeto, in my opinion. Although it's funny, we were just before we pushed the record, we were having this, you know, high pollutant, vegetarian, vegan, sustainability conversation, mm -hmm. and. What exactly Mac and Cheetos do or don't taste like seems kind of ridiculous uh, yeah, in the yeah, context yeah. of that. Um, anyway, I, the Mac and Cheetos is kind of interesting. It seems like we're in this time of food mashups. Um, you know, my family last Thanksgiving made uh, turducken. You know about this? Yeah, my brother makes those. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's this orgy of excessive smorgasbord yeah and then to go with the turducken of course another family member made a pie cake in. Mm -hmm. and wow. you know actually i um i really like making chai mate latte which i suppose <laughs> is a mashup already but now lately i've been mixing my chai mate latte with horchata to make chai chata <laughs> so um do you think that the food mashup is somehow, I mean, obviously um, on the internet we've had so many mashups in recent years, is it is it coming from that or inspired by? Or? I think that food is always in like an evolutionary state. I think that that's why people still go to culinary school because they want to make their mark with some kind of branded object, some kind of branded food that they can weird. call their own and then you get some, this Frankensteinian monster because of it, you know? Well, it's not weirder than production. No, it's not. Uh, I just think it's something that uh, America is such like a, a people want to call it the melting pot, but it's really a salad bowl. They just want to, I think, increase their fan base and their market, right? Like they're able to take two genres of people and fuse them together through this one singular item. Uh, <laughs> the Cheeto culture and the mac and cheese culture. I don't know. But it, it, it's not just isolated to this, it's like when you go to these like Vietnamese restaurants that fuse like subs with like their cultural like foods. We were talking about how like McDonald's, you So go the fusion to, trucks we don't think of as cheesy, we think of the fusion trucks as kind of cool. Right, right. Um, well, with the Vietnam, that has a colonial history too, yeah. that they use French baguette. Yeah, I love that, uh, that, yeah. that yeah. Vietnamese sandwiches are on French baguettes. Yeah, That's yeah. Cool. Oh, Von Mies? Von Mies, yeah. exactly, yeah. Um, but we were just talking about, you go to anywhere in the world like that has a McDonald's, and there is this fusion between the cultural food products there and then the commercial branding of McDonald's food. So, you know, you go to Japan and you get that weird black bun uh -huh. seaweed burger. You go yeah, to Korea, China or Korea. Have, uh, for example, the rice burgers. So yeah. instead of the bun, you have rice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So the, the burger, the meat, or the mm -hmm. fish, or whatever you have, the sandwich in, between the, the rice cakes. Is in rice cakes. And that, in Japanese culture, is due to the fact that they don't believe a meal is complete without rice, so they have to incorporate that like with their kind of ideology about food and like what a meal is for them. I should have... I should have eaten breakfast because it's actually not bad. It's what? <laughs> I know it's not the type of food that I like usually. Yeah. Normally I would not, I mean this is not, it's, it's 
not even okay. However, I didn't have any breakfast and I was so hungry. This but it's like the, the garbage will do. <laughs> so what do you think, Natalie? We should have had breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think we're all too sober to be eating these right now. That's the problem. This is like clearly drunk food. Drunk food. Yeah. Yeah, we need beer and mac and cheetos. We'll be bloated forever. So, our exhibition that we're inviting you to contribute to, uh, Shame Wrapped in Repulsion, uh, Alyssa and I are co-curating and we drag Natalie along because she's, <laughs> because she's smart and, and drag along. Yeah. <laughs> just back from a big European I just heard. adventure. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so say something about the show. Yeah, so the origins of this show... My veggie burger has completely disintegrated, by the way. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, How I, the experience? <laughs> I had been seeing some feed on my Facebook and also imagery on my Instagram about these mac and cheetos. And I was like, you know what? I need to try that just for like the cultural experience. So I went out. Uh, actually I actually had my boyfriend go out, get the item and bring it home so I could try it. And before I opened the box, I took an Instagram photo and said in the tagline, uh, all my dreams are coming true. I can finally die happy, obviously in an ironic sense. Um, and then I ate the thing and I was like, okay, like it's just, it's just like a featured item. It's gonna go away in a couple months. It's just really hyped up. Their marketing is actually really intelligent in my opinion. I mean, they, they market it well. Uh, but anyway, so after that whole experience was done, uh, Glenn saw it on my Instagram feed and he was like, well, what are those? And I said, they're essentially just Cheetos infused with mac and cheese and then deep fried. Also, shame wrapped in repulsion. And he was just like, oh my God, I love that. And he asked if we could start an exhibition together. So I said, yeah, I think that's a wonderful idea. Um, and on top of that comment, I got like this kind of negative uh, response from a friend they said that you know uh, in response to the tagline I can finally die happy now they said well that might work out for you because you might die from eating those and I was like <laughs> wow I mean like what is that comment what am I supposed to do with that comment so I thought a lot about like shame culture and like n not only like my personal experience like knowing that of course it's an unhealthy food object I'm just like consuming it in an ironic purpose and I want to taste this like commercial item but then someone's like shaming me for my like awareness of it I guess so I wrote a small essay about it and Glenn put together this awesome website and we're having submissions coming in right now poems uh, videos gifts uh, like photographs um, and yeah that's kind of and you yeah. should submit <laughs> yes and so it could actually be about this food item or about food in general, but it does. But it's certainly not limited yeah. to food. It's not isolated to that. I think it's anything that we could fetishize or indulge in that, in a quote unquote like a normal society, would deem as taboo. And I think that this exhibition is like a wonderful platform. It can be like a sort of safe digital space where people can come to to express themselves via like whatever they find intriguing or interesting. And knowing that everybody who is contributing has that same mentality, like. Like, oh, we understand that like what is quote unquote normal in society is actually just completely arbitrary, and that they can rest assured that everyone will be a weirdo here, and we can all share our weird things. <laughs> I guess shame wrapped in repulsion is sort of a mashup in itself. Yeah, yeah. I like the fact that it's about you know spreading tolerance. You know, yeah. It's a space where you can where weirdos can come together, where crazy people can come together and share their experiences and things that they like and were stemmed as weird mm -hmm. in whatever you call a normal society. Mm -hmm. It's really about you know, making people more tolerant towards each other. I like that mm -hmm. idea. I like that aspect a lot. Tolerance through gross food. Tolerance through the mac and cheeto. <laughs> That's how we evolve, mm -hmm. right? Who thought that this little thing could be such like a heavy, meaty like <laughs> substance for an art project. So that's our story. Um, <laughs> submit, engage, see you online. Maybe. Bye. <laughs>